All right, it looks like we've got a really good group of folks who have joined us thus far. So I think now's a good time to kick things off. My name is Megan LaPlam and I am a senior product marketing manager for our secure cloud products. And I just wanna thank all of you for joining today's live stream event. And we're really excited to announce multi-region support for Vault on HashiCorp Cloud Platform. HashiCorp Cloud Platform is a fully managed cloud offering, and you're going to hear us refer to it often as HCP Vault. And joining me today is my colleague, Justin Weisick, who is a senior uh, technical product marketing manager for Vault. So during our session, we're going to jump into this latest product announcement, see a live demo, and then we're going to follow that up with a live Q&A. And just so you're aware, this webinar is being recorded and the recording will be made available post-processing. And you can expect that typically within two business days. And lastly, if you can please type your questions in the question box down at the bottom and we will answer them during our Q&A section. And with that, let's jump in and I will turn things over to Justin. Great, thanks Megan. Um, before we dive in, maybe I'll apologize. Uh, feeling a little under the weather, so my voice has a little bit more bass than normal, but we'll get there. <laughs> All right, so uh, as Megan mentioned, we're uh, very excited to be launching a multi-region replication with HCP Vault. Um, so through the presentation today, I'll sort of talk about what HCP Vault is and some of the core tenants that uh, you know make up HCP Vault. And then we'll walk through some of the recent changes, um, mainly multi-region replication, along with um, logging and monitoring. So I have uh, just a few slides. Um, I'll talk about sort of the basics, and then we'll dive into some live demos. Uh, as Megan mentioned, yeah, please use the Q&A box if you have any questions. Um, I th the team will try to answer them during the uh, webinar but we'll also um, have live Q&A at the end. All right, so let's dive in. So before we start, I just wanted to sort of step back for a second and talk about uh, HashiCorp as a company, because um, you know today we're gonna be talking about Vault, but there's actually uh, a bunch of different products that you're probably familiar with. Um, you know, If you're working with infrastructure automation, you're definitely gonna run into Terraform. Uh, you know, a great product uh, and a huge ecosystem for interacting with all sorts of different infrastructure. Um, you know, Vagrant is very popular uh, for spinning up virtual machines and sort of the list goes on. So I just wanted to sort of mention that because, um, you know, a lot of folks probably interact with our products, but they don't necessarily know they come from HashiCorp. And then today I wanted to talk uh, particularly about HCP Vault. So the move to the cloud involves sort of a shift in the operating model of, for infrastructure. Traditionally, we had sort of a relatively static world of dynamic servers, static IP addresses, and a clear network perimeter. You know, you might have a VLAN where you have all your core infrastructure, and then you have, a, you know, some sort of a, a tightly controlled VLAN where, you know, you have external facing servers sitting in there. Um, but in the cloud, it's sort of an ephemeral elastic pool of infrastructure that has dynamic addresses and no real clear network perimeter. You know, in a static world, we establish a, the network perimeter and manage access at the IP level. But, um, you know, in the cloud, that doesn't really work. So for security teams, the cloud requires, a, you know, a fundamental different approach in the way we think about it, starting with the underlying network you know, we think of that as inherently low trust. You know, if a bad actor is on the network and they're on, you know, in our secure area, hey, that's going to be a serious problem. So we wanted to move from the idea of, you know, securing the network perimeter to sort of up-leveling it to securing the application. So Vault, a primary sort of um, uh, feature of Vault is identity-based security. So when a application says, actually, maybe I'll, I'll step back for a second. So at the sort of simplest terms, Vault is a secrets manager that sits on your network and you can put, um, you know, secure data in there. Things like usernames, passwords, API keys, all that kind of stuff. 
say I'm a, and it's primarily for machine to machine access. So, hey, I'm a web app. I need access to, um, you know, a username and password to access a particular database. Uh, you know, I'm going to talk to Vault. I'll pull those credentials and then, uh, you know, I'll make that connection. So, what's the difference between, you know, uh, you know, saying, hey, you know what, this application that this IP address is able to fetch that secret versus saying, you know, this application might, uh, you know, have a pool of uh, infrastructure. You know, I want to authenticate that uh, application versus authenticating, you know, IP ad an IP address. So that's where this concept of identity-based security comes in. Hey, you know what? I'm going to authenticate this application versus some hard-coded uh, address. You know, and then obviously a core feature of Vault is, you know, secrets management. It also has a, a bunch of different capabilities around, you know, protecting data using data encryption. Uh, maybe I'll just move to the next slide here. So, you know, we talked a lot about secrets. So what is a secret? You know, it's a, could be usernames, passwords, API keys, SSL certificates. There's also a lot of sensitive data that companies are, are dealing with. You know, say you're a, a, a hotel chain, you know, you're going to be dealing with potentially passport numbers, credit card numbers, um, all sorts of PII data. So Vault actually handles, um, you know, uh, secrets as well as sensitive data. So you might think, hey, why do I need a password manager, you know, a, a secrets management tool like Vault? Well, you know, if, if you just have a few applications, uh, you know, Vault might be overkill for that. But uh, say, for example, you're a, a startup or an, an enterprise uh, company, you know, uh, there's sort of a wide spectrum of uh, sort of use cases in there. But let's let's start at, say, maybe a small startup. Maybe you have 10 applications. Um, how do you actually, how do those applications get the secrets? Are you like uh, hard coding them? Uh, you know, are they sitting in configuration files on disk? What about uh, SSL certificates? You know, if someone's able to access uh, those disks, uh, access disk, the disk, and, you know, fetch those secrets, obviously that's a bad idea. You know, how do humans acquire those secrets? You know, do they just go into a file system and read those secrets out? Um, how do you know when the secrets were last updated? Say, for example, you do have an intrusion. How can you go and revoke those secrets? Um, you know, there's no sort of audit logs of, hey, who is using these secrets at a particular time? Um, what about, you know, accountability if there is some sort of a compromise that you can go in and, um, you know, sort of look at it and figure out, hey, what happened? Vault really answers all of these questions and that, you know, you have a central place where you can store all your secrets. Um, you know, it's primarily for machines, but if humans need to get in there, you know, there's a web interface, you can go and check that out as well as all the command line stuff. Um, you know, there's uh, audit, audit logs and monitoring of, hey, when were secrets last updated? You know, you can revoke, revoke secrets. You can also tell, hey, who used these particular secrets? So it, it really encompasses sort of the whole workflow of uh, secrets management. One of the guiding principles as I sort of mentioned earlier, when we talked about, um, you know, the shift to the cloud is identity brokering. You know, we want to, um, you know, authenticate applications versus, you know, IP addresses. So we have a bunch of different integrations for all sorts of cloud providers, um, you know, all sorts of uh, databases. If you want to inject secrets, you know, using Kubernetes or something, you can use service accounts. You know, I, I've sort of lost track of the amount of integrations there are, but, you know, if you, if you have a use case, I'm pretty sure that's covered by Vault. Um, also, if, you know, we don't have an integration for what, what you're trying to do, you can always use the API. So for Vault, you know, you can use the API, CLI, or web interface, as well as all the uh, secrets integrations. You know, there's... Um, uh, maybe I'll pull up the docs later, but, uh, you know, if you're using a major cloud provider, um, you know, Vault obviously has all the integrations there. Same with, um, you know, say you wanted to do database credential rotation on uh, Mongo or Oracle or, you know, pretty much any flavor of database, we have that capability as well. Why that's sort of important is, 
a lot of companies face, um, you know, regulatory requirements, or they might go through some sort of an audit where it says, hey, you know what, you need to um, rotate these credentials on, you know, a monthly basis or something like that. If you're not using a secrets management tool that has that capability, that can be quite cumbersome. You know, you're maybe maintaining an Excel file that says, hey, you know, here's a list of all my servers. Uh, here's when the passwords were last rotated. Obviously, that introduces, um, you know, a lot of manual work, and it can be quite cumbersome if you, uh, say, miss something like that. Whereas if you use a tool like Vault, you know, it, uh, and you set up credential rotation, it'll just go in and uh, change those credentials for you. So you don't need to worry about it. So today we're primarily talking about cloud, but there's sort of three flavors of Vault, and I wanted to highlight that. So we have the open source side. It's self-managed. It's always free. You can access it at vaultproject.io. There's a huge community of folks that are contributing and using the open source software, which is awesome. It's really driving the you know, pace of innovation. And you know, if someone has a use case, uh, they can go solve it themselves. We have an enterprise solution, which is also self-managed. So say you're a large financial institution and you have uh, you know, multiple data centers around the world that aren't in the cloud. You know, this is a self-managed solution uh, for them. It obviously, doesn't just include financial institutions, but you can imagine the um, range of uh, companies that would want something like that. As well as, you know, um, if you don't have the in-house expertise or, or you prefer managed services, you know, the cloud, particularly HCP Vault, is, um, you know, sort of the third flavor. That's what we're chatting about today. I'll just uh, walk through a few slides that sort of show the interface, but I'm not going to do uh, too much here because uh, you know we'll do a live uh, demo in a second. So um, this is sort of the cloud dashboard. Uh, it's a portal where you can get access to managed services of console, Packer, Vault, and Terraform. So as I'll show you in a second here, uh, you can go into the portal, just click a button. Um, you know, push button deployment of, hey, I, I want a, a vault cluster. Um, we have a few different tiers of clusters that you can get. Um, you know, we have a development instance. This is a single node instance. If, um, you know, you just want to play around with vault, you know, maybe you're going through some uh, tutorials. Um, it's a great way to get started. And then, um, you know, we have tiers all the way up to, you know, um, very demanding workloads that, you um, you know, if, uh, that include uh, three node clusters. But uh, the thing that I really wanted to chat about today is uh, performance replication. So this is where, I think I have a slide here on it. Actually, I'll chat about that in a second. So, you know, performance replication is, is for extremely demanding workloads where, you know, you're maybe running in multiple AWS regions. Say you're running in, you know, AWS West, and then maybe you're running in AWS East. Lots of companies do this for all sorts of reasons, but the main reason is, hey, I want to lower latency if um, you know, I, I have users on the East Coast, as well as if I have uh, you know, users on the West Coast. I don't want them going across the country uh, to sort of fulfill that request. So you know, it's particularly aimed at uh, companies you know, who are, have latency sensitive uh, requests. There's all sorts of companies that want this, but um, you know, one that sort of comes to mind would be a gaming company. You know, you might have, uh, um, you know, sort of users all over the world and you don't necessarily want them, uh, you want to keep latency to a minimum. So, you know, you want to host the infrastructure as close to them as possible. So you might have multiple clusters throughout the world. Uh, and this, uh, you know, helps with that. Uh, it's fully managed infrastructure. So you can just click a button, deploy the cluster and then HashiCorp will manage it for you. Um, you know, we have, uh, you know, 24 seven, uh, across the world support. So, um, you know, there, we're constantly monitoring the clusters and, you know, it really, we hear a lot from, uh, you know, companies, Hey, I, I love this product, but you know, I don't necessarily have the teams to run it. And this is where the managed offering comes in. Um, you know, you can just spin it up and away you go. Um, the goal here is to have a multi-cloud workflow. Right now, we're only on AWS, but um, you know we're looking to expand to the other clouds uh, aggressively. 
So you'll uh, probably hear more about that soon. I just wanted to sort of chat about, um, you know, the pace uh, of innovation happening within HCP Vault. So around uh, 2005 is when we initially released Vault. Um, you know, that was pro primarily for folks that wanted, uh, you know, a secrets manager within their, um, you know, on-premise data centers. And then in April uh, of last year, we launched HCP Vault you know, with uh, development and standard tiers. Then in August, we launched the starter offering. This is also, um, you know, production grade, but there was, we, we sort of found a sweet spot between, you know, development instances and then people that wanted larger infrastructure. So we created the starter tier, which um, allows people to easily onboard from development over to, um, you know, a larger cluster without, um, you know, having, uh, I guess, you know, wasting too much resources, you know, they don't need a, uh, a full blown large, large scale cluster. Then in November, we launched integrations with uh, Datadog, Grafana Cloud and Splunk, uh, you know, for exporting metrics and logs. I'll, I'll show you that in a minute here. And then, you know, this month, we're excited to launch, launch multi-region uh, multi replication. This is where you can have um, basically two clusters and they're synced together and you're replicating secrets. So, you know, I might have a cluster on uh, AWS West and then I want to replicate that data over to AWS East. Um, you know, it happens uh, in the background and you don't need to worry about it. This is just sort of a diagram that shows what's happening here. So, you know, um, I'll show you this in the portal in a second, but um, you can deploy a cluster called a performance primary. Um, it's in a AWS US West region. And then I spin up a performance secondary and that's in AWS US East. And uh, you create a replication and it basically syncs secrets over. So the real use case here is, you know, hey, I have a demanding workload and I'm in multiple AWS regions. I don't necessarily want to cross the country to, you know, fetch those secrets. You know, it might be uh, for, you know, maybe you're requesting a lot of secrets. It might be sort of a request per second scale type thing, or it might be, you know, your applications are latency sensitive. So you don't necessarily want to make that round trip time across the country. Um, I think I probably covered these two use cases, but, you know, for multi-region, um, you know, uh, applications, you know, you, you want to keep the secrets as close to your applications as possible. Same thing with uh, scaling throughput. Um, I sort of mentioned this, but, um, you know, we, we've had the capability within HCP Vault to export metrics, but that can be a little bit cumbersome because, hey, you need to go to the console and, you know, you need to download logs. So we wanted to, integrate with the tools that our customers are using. So we've created three integrations, or I guess I should say we've worked with external companies, you know, Datadog, Grafana Cloud, and Splunk to create integrations with HCP Vault. So that, you know, if you're using Datadog or Splunk or Grafana, you know, you can export logs and metrics and you can, you know, identify suspicious usage patterns. You can do capacity planning, say for example, Hey, I'm on the uh, starter tier of HCP Vault, and I noticed that um, you know the CPU is going up, and you know maybe it's a little bit uh, latency sensitive. Maybe you need to scale up your cluster to um, you know handle the load. Um, and there's also cost optimization. Hey, you know what? What applications are um, you know fetching secrets from Vault, and so that I can do you know capacity planning there. I guess uh, my sort of takeaway from this is, hey, multi-region replication is available today. You can just go to the console and use it. Um, so there's, uh, yeah, it's ready to go. Sorry, I'm just reading that question here. Uh, maybe I'll answer the questions at the end. All right, so let's go and check out the demos. I'm just gonna stop my share for a second.
So let me jump out of my presentation. Perfect. Okay, so uh, maybe I'll just log out so you can see the full experience. Great. So let me full screen this again. Great. So if you go to um, portal.cloud.hashicorp.com, you'll be greeted with a page that looks like this. You know, you can either sign in or you can create an account. Um, since I already have an account, I'm just going to sign in. But if you were, um, say, new to the platform and you want to create an account, all new accounts get a $50 credit. And that's able to run a development instance, I think, for a couple months. So say, for example, you know, you're know um, you interested in playing around with Vault. Uh, you want to go through some of our hands-on labs that are hosted on learn.hashicorp.com. You know, you can come over here, spin up a development instance and go through all those labs and it's uh, totally covered. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. So I'm just going to log in with uh, my GitHub. But, um, you know, when you sign up for your account, you can select, uh, um, you know, the authentication mechanism you want. So here's the uh, console. Maybe I'll just uh, shoot this down. So we have hosted instances or managed services of console, Packer, Vault, and Terraform. So you can uh, say, for example, you know, you're interested in running console, you can come over here and, you know, you can just click a button and, uh, you know, deploy a console cluster. I will chat about um, HVNs, HashiCorp Virtual Networks. These are networks that you create within HCP. So I have two networks here, one in US West, and one in US East, these are, these are in AWS. And the way you connect um, you know, these managed services with your infrastructure is either through AWS peering or using AWS Transit Gateway. So you'll know you'll establish that connection and then you can access the managed instances of you know, whatever uh, product you're choosing here. Obviously we're talking about fault today, so we'll, we'll focus on that. So if I click on vault, you'll see that, hey, I have three clusters running right now. But uh, this one looks a little different. So we'll talk about that for a second. So maybe I won't focus on uh, replication just yet. I'll just sort of chat about what the interface looks like. And then we'll uh, uh, chat about uh, you know, the pr new performance replication. So if I want to create a new vault cluster, I just click Create Cluster. These are the tiers that I was talking about earlier. You know, we have a single node development instance. This is great for just getting started. If uh, you need something a little bit, um, you know, you want to go from a single node to say a three node highly available cluster, but you don't need necessarily need, um, you know, a lot of uh, throughput for that cluster. You know, this is a great onboarding uh, tier. And then, you know, hey, I have, uh, you know, high request weight production workloads. Uh, and, you know, I, I need a upgraded support level. Um, you know, you can start with a standard cluster. And this is what we've added today. Plus, this is, um, you know, cross region uh, replication of secrets. So, hey, you know, I'm running in multiple data centers. I, I don't necessarily want to do, uh, you know, synchronizing of secrets myself, because obviously that's uh, cumbersome. I want Vault to take care of it. Uh, that's you select this. You select the network that you want to deploy this cluster into. And we'll chat about this for a second. So we have a, a couple of different ways you could actually access Vault. Um, by default, all Vault clusters are, you know, not exposed to the external internet. You know, they live in a this HVN. I guess the equivalent language on AWS is they live in an AWS VPC. You know, and there's no uh, traffic routed out to the internet. However, 
you know, if, if you're running a development instance and you just kind of want to play around with Vault, you can flip this uh, switch and it'll expose an external IP address. This is really cool because, you know, you don't necessarily need to, you know, have infrastructure in AWS and then create a peering connection. Uh, it's just a couple extra hoops to jump through if you just want to sort of play around with Vault. We do recommend that, you know, for per, uh, production clusters, you don't enable external access, you know, and you, you go through the peering or transit gateway, particularly, you know, if you're running, a, you know, one of these uh, tiers. Cool. And then um, within each tier, you have, um, you know, sort of a, a instance type that you, that you want to run. So all of these uh, starter, standard, and plus are three node instances. You know, we maintain highly available clusters, and then you can select the instance type. So, you know, if you have a, if you know through benchmarking or something like that, hey, I'm going to have a, you know, a, a demanding uh, load on this cluster, you know, you might want to scale it up. And then all you do is click create and the cluster is spun up for you. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, you know, if I did click create, what would happen is, you know, behind the scenes, we'd bootstrap a cluster just for you. This isn't shared infrastructure. So you're actually getting a managed instance that uh, is dedicated just to you. So now I'll go back and we'll look at, um, you know, performance replication. So I've already created a cluster where I've created a uh, replication, but, uh, you know, we'll just go into one that doesn't have replication set up and then we'll just sort of look at how you'd actually set up replication. So I have a, a primary right now, uh, you know, I'm using the, the plus tier. I have a primary cluster and it's sitting in US West. You know, if I go down here, it says, you know, I'm running Vault 109. I have, I've enabled a public IP address on this just so we can play around with it. You know, I can, um, you know, get it a bid token. I can download logs, you know, all that kind of stuff. So if I go over to, you know, you'll see uh, it says new here. I can click replication. And it says, hey, you know what? I want to set up a replicated cluster. So we can set that up. So let's go set up replication. You know, you'll you'll give it uh, the name of the cluster. You know, my sort of naming convention here was you know plus primary US West. So you know, if I want to do this, I might say plus secondary US East, uh, just so that it's easy to find what it is. You know, you can pick whatever name you want. You'll select the network that you want to uh, deploy this cluster into. So you know, I might deploy it into US East, and then I just click create secondary. Again, behind the scenes, you know, we'll bootstrap that cluster for you in the region that you selected. Um, and then we'll establish that uh, replication between those two clusters. So it's really just a click above a button and you get the, um, you know, performance replication, which is uh, amazing. Um, so that's sort of uh, the overview there. We also talked about, you know, hey, I want to export metrics or audit logs. This is where we talk about, you know, uh, Datadog, uh, Grafana Cloud, or Splunk. So, say for example, I wanted to stream metrics out to, you know, my platform of choice. Or same thing with audit logs. How do I, how would I actually do that? So you just click uh, enable streaming. You select the provider that you would like to establish, uh, you know, a stream with, you know, Datadog, Grafana, or Splunk. And then you will um, enter your sort of credentials, your API key, uh, same thing with uh, Grafana or uh, Splunk. You know, what's the endpoint where I want to actually send the, the, these metrics? Um, and then, you know, you'll enter your authorization token. And, and it's pretty, pretty super easy to like establish that and get the log shipped over. Same thing for audit log streaming. Uh, it's the exact same workflow. You know, I, I want to establish it with Datadog, Grafana or Splunk. You know, you'll just pop in the details there and away you go. Again, you can also download the logs. Uh, you know, say for example, uh, I want to see what's happening on this cluster. I can download the audit logs. Uh, you can sort of select, hey, what's the range of uh, data that I want, and, and then just click download, and it uh, will download it for you. There's also snapshots that happen. So say, hey, there's some sort of disaster that happens. I uh, ended up blowing away a bunch of data. You know, I want to restore. 
this cluster uh, from a particular point in time, uh, you just click restore and uh, it will restore the cluster using that snapshot. So using a managed service obviously has a, a ton of benefits that I hope you can see, uh, you know, versus, uh, you know, installing and managing Vault on your own. Um, we also have cluster details in here. You can say, okay, hey, I'm running a performance cluster. Uh, you know, I'm running three nodes in a highly available manner. So that's, um, you know, a, a plus cluster without performance replication. So now let's go check out a cluster that has performance re replication already established. So you can see I have my uh, primary cluster sitting in US West. And then if I go down to replication, you can see, hey, there's a, you know, a secondary cluster that's already established. And you know, that's my primary cluster is in US West and my secondary cluster is in US East. And they're um, you know, in different subnets there. Um, that's pretty much it. You know, there's, there's not a lot uh, in here other than, hey, I want to establish uh, you know, replication. Um, and Justin, if it's easier for you, I'm happy to start answering some of these questions while you're uh, focusing on QA. Um, yeah, sorry about that. No worries. Uh, so uh, first question was around what are the main reasons to convince developers to use HTTP Vault over each cloud provider's own Vault service? Um, so HTTP Vault provides identity-based secrets management, data encryption, and supports off, meth off methods and secret engines uh, for all major cloud providers. So typically these cloud provider secret managers are really optimized for workloads and identities on the cloud. Um, so I can give you an example, like why HashiCorp Vault versus Azure Key Vault. Um, so ATP Vault provides uh, this, this multi-cloud approach to being able to support secrets management, um, as well as more advanced secrets management use cases like for example, Azure Key Vault also doesn't support dynamic secrets or tokenization capabilities. So those are a few reasons um, to consider ACP Vault if you are supporting um, a hybrid environment uh, or are thinking about your cloud migration strategy to a multi-cloud uh, environment and uh, you need more robust centralized secrets management that is optimized for all cloud providers as well as suitable for on-prem as well. Yeah, I'll maybe just add to that, uh, Megan. Yeah, it's a, a really around, the, you know, if you're, if you're in AWS and you have one application, um, you know, and you just need to, uh, you know, get and set a, a, a few secrets, you know, Vault might actually be overkill for what you're trying to do. It's really when you have lots of applications and lots of secrets and you have sort of a policy that you need to enforce around those secrets that Vault comes in uh, and is so useful. Uh, there's also around the, you know, advanced capabilities. Uh, Megan sort of mentioned around, you know, dynamic secrets. So Vault has the capability, you know, we have integrations with all cloud providers, but, you know, say for example, hey, I'm on, I'm running on AWS um, and I need a short lived, you know, credential to maybe do a backup job or something like that. You can ask Vault, hey, you know, give me a credential with this access policy that's only, you know, valid for 15 minutes and Vault will give you that credential, you know, or, hey, you know, I, I have a, um, you know, an RDS instance and I need to rotate to the you know, database credential on there, you know, once a month, you know, Vault has the capability of doing that. I'm sort of just singling out AWS, but Vault has the capability to do that across all cloud providers. So, um, yeah. Thank you, Justin. Um, do you want me to continue? Are you still debugging? Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to get it to work. So maybe I'll just go through the uh, okay. questions here. That's That sounds great. Um, the next question is, does multi-region replication, is it made only for performance reasons? And is it applicable for HA or resilience? Um, I'm happy to take this one, Justin, while you're adjusting to the Q and A's. Um, that yes, HTTP Vault really is geared towards performance use cases. And 
So customers that choose HCP Vault really entrust HashiCorp to manage disaster recovery and high availability of Vault servers. And as part of this managed offering, you know, we will use all commercially reasonable efforts to maximize availability of HashiCorp cloud services and provide uptime guarantees based on service level agreements. Um, related to that question, uh, we got a couple of related questions. So uh, I think particularly for uh, existing Vault enterprise users who are familiar with uh, supporting disaster recovery themselves, there's a question here around, is active active multi-region replication supported by the self-managed enterprise Vault included here today? And if not, what's our ETA? So we are currently evaluating disaster recovery improvements that are geared towards regional outages, which are very unusual, but can happen. Uh, today, all enterprise production grade ECP vault clusters, um, starter, standard, and plus, consist of three highly available AJ nodes spanning uh, different AZs within one region. So we have a number of mechanisms in place, including the integrated monitoring uh, with leading observability platforms, um, snapshots that we will be helping to, that we will be using to, um, to restore vault in the instance of a vault outage and to ensure that nodes are health checked regularly as well. But as I mentioned, we're currently evaluating disaster recovery improvements that are geared towards those rare, but sometimes happens regional outages. Um, all right, so I'm going to pass the next question off to you, Justin. Um, question about plugins. There's a growing number of plugins from different partners like JFrog for Artifactory. And is there any uh, plan to start supporting these in HCP Vault and work with these partners? This would be important for the growth of HCP Vault. Um, ecosystem. Yeah, thanks. I think we have a member of the PM team that could maybe chat about roadmap, but I'll just give sort of the uh, uh, short answer. Yeah, right now we uh, Vault doesn't support external plugins, so I can't go in there. Or you know, HTTP Vault doesn't support uh, support external plugins, so I can't go into that interface and say, hey, you know what, load in um, you know this external plugin. Um, I think obviously you know, there's a, a lot of folks that want to do that. So it's, you know, something we're looking at, but um, it, it's not something we're supporting today. I don't know, Samantha, if you have, you want to mention anything else? It is on the roadmap for uh, support later this year. I'd encourage you to work with a sales rep so that we can better document um, which plugins in particular. Uh, we've got a lot of requests for Oracle, JFrog, uh, et cetera. And so we're trying to find the best way on how we can support, you know, if we can't support all these at once, you know, what the rollout will look like, but it is on the roadmap to be supported. It's just not supported today. Awesome. And I would just add, and I would just add that um, folks can subscribe to our blog where we're providing updates on our growing integrations um, or check out hashicorp.com slash partners uh, to see our growing ecosystem with ATP Vault. Uh, next question is, ATP Vault is capable to work as PKI. Can this be used for providing private certificate authorization in multi-region clusters? And Justin, we're happy to take that one if you'd like. Uh, sorry, I was just looking at something. Can you uh, repeat the question? Uh, no problem. Uh, so ATP Vault is capable to work as um, PKI. And can this be used for providing private CA multi-region clusters? Yeah, so you just uh, you use the same workflow. You can just generate um, you know PKI keys, and you can do that either from the uh, performance primary or the performance secondary. Also, what a lot of folks do is you know they use the transit secret engine if they want to do um, you know say encryption in, in multiple uh, regions. So. What's kind of cool about this is, uh, you know, you you can generate, uh, you know, you can use the transit secret engine to um, basically do a, uh, a bunch of workloads in, you know, one region, and you know, it doesn't need to phone home, phone home to do the workloads in the other region. So yeah, there's a, a big scalability improvement um, that would come across both those use cases. Awesome. Um, 
there were a lot of questions related to timing around Azure and GCP. So I'll just take this one uh, quickly, Justin, and note that we are evaluating and actively pursuing um, our uh, Azure managed server, our ACP Vault on Azure today, uh, but we can't share a timeline at this time. And similarly for Google Cloud Platform, we have we don't currently have a timeline for GCP, um, but as Justin mentioned earlier in this presentation, multi-cloud support is a primary um, objective for us. So more to come on that in the coming weeks and months. And a related topic, so we have multi region replication, does this work with different platforms like Mesos clusters to GCP clusters, or is it just for AWS? And so today, replication is really solely focused for AWS instances. Um, all right, let's see. It looks like we're coming to the end of our questions, Justin. So I'm gonna just answer one more and then we can wrap up here. We're coming to the end of the hour. Um, one question is their privacy statement or GDC, GDPR policy since the clusters are managed by HashiCorp. Um, yes, you can view our privacy policy on our website and uh, that's on hashicorp.com slash privacy so you can read more there um and i think that's it for us i was going to answer one more question so generally we deploy more than three to five clusters in a single region with the cluster providing option to deploy these three to five clusters in multiple regions, such as US, Europe, Asia, and Southeast Asia. Um, so currently there is a three cluster limit per region. And with the initial launch of PLUS, we are only allowing one secondary per primary. But you can work with a sales rep if you need to increase these limits. Um, and I hope that answers your questions, but we would love to hear more about additional regions that you want supported, uh, as well as um, additional scaling capabilities that you would like to see. Um, and I think that brings us to the end of our questions and answers. And I, with that, Justin, if you want to just pull up the slides, we can close out as we approach the top of the hour. Uh, yeah, thanks very much, Megan. Um, again, I apologize, I couldn't get the demo working, but uh, you know, I was reading through the chat here and it looks like someone else was able to connect to my cluster. So um, yeah, you know, it's a it's a pretty cool demo. You know, it's very simple, you know, you connect to the primary and the secondary and you uh, sync secrets over, but uh, I must have messed something up here. So I apologize for that. Um, yeah, but hopefully you check it out. Thank you. Awesome. Um, all right. Well, thank you everyone so much for joining today. This, um, thank you, Justin, for this great demo and as well as the lively conversation and active participation in the Q&A. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's live stream. If you are new to ACP Vault, you can try it for free today and receive $50 in credit. So visit cloud.hashicorp.com, click on Vault for more information. And if you're an existing customer and you're ready to upgrade, please contact sales and we can get you moving very quickly on uh, multi-region support. So finally, as we mentioned at the beginning of this live stream, we're going to make this recording available after processing. So expect to hear from us within about two days where we'll send an email to everyone who registered with the recording link. And with that, uh, have a great day. And thank you all. Look forward to seeing you replicate your clusters and multi-region support. Have a good one.